Hello guys, it is me, Victoria, and for today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about four themes that I believe are at the very heart of many women's erotic fantasies. And these four themes actually form a narrative or, you know, a basic plot structure, a storyline that really informs, I think, a lot about the way women experience dating, romance, and relationships. So I think that by understanding these four themes, which may be pretty shocking to some of you guys, you can um, understand women a lot better than you do. Because um, so many of you guys are asking me in the comments things like, you know, why can't women be honest with me? Why can't women be direct with me? And and in, in my head, I'm thinking, wow, 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 you guys really aren't just seeing what a woman sees through her eyes. And so the more I started thinking about this, the, the more I realized um, this narrative can help you guys understand something that's really driving many women, not all, okay, from the deepest possible level. All right, guys, so let us go on to the video. All right, guys, so let us go on to the four themes, the four elements that are at, that are at the heart of many women's deepest erotic fantasies. All right. I am trusting you guys way too much, way more than I should, really. But uh, all right, let's go on to the first very controversial theme. The first theme is patriarchy. So what do I mean by patriarchy? I mean a world of men, a male dominated environment, whether that be a boardroom, like in Fifty Shades of Grey, whether that be um, a medieval time, like in, you know, so many movies we know and love, like The Princess Bride, whether that be, you know, a male locker room, a poker room, um, you know, a fraternity, an elite club of men, like in, you know, the BDSM classic, The Story of O, a male-dominated world, okay, where women are seen as inferior, um, you know, for the right or the wrong reasons. And um, in this patriarchal world, they're, these men are naturally dominant because they feel they are justified in their, you know, superior status. So you can see the themes of just masculinity and the themes of domination fit under this umbrella of the patriarchy. And this is a theme in many female fantasies. Um, I was talking with my boyfriend and he was saying, you know, well, guys can understand this because, I mean, what guy wouldn't want to be in a room full of hot women, okay? It's similar. It's that feeling of just being surrounded by masculinity, okay? It can have a very, very deep appeal. All right. So let's go on to the second theme. The second theme is hyper-femininity. Again, my boyfriend was saying a guy might relate to this because every guy wants to be, you know, that hyper-masculine dude in an action movie or something. Well, in the same way, there's a deep appeal to hyper-femininity, which is this idea of being the most beautiful in the land. Um, being valued for your hotness. Being, you know, sexually objectified and even commodified for your hotness, um, not being like seen for your personality, um, not being seen for your intelligence, just having people view you as, you know, hot or not, and, and being hot and, and being valued for your beauty, and also for your feminine traits as well. And these feminine traits are things that are often seen as weaknesses in our culture, like, and, and you know, to be honest, often our weaknesses, like, for example, um, you know, naivete, um, you know, kind of like innocence, um, qualities like, like shyness, introversion, um, 
being shame prone, um, these kind of, or, you know, being like blushing, these hyper feminine qualities, um, are, are really valued and sought after, um, in many female fantasies in many different ways, but, you know, you will see this theme of hyper femininity coming up in so many different ways. Um, let's take the Princess Bride, okay? We have the theme of patriarchy. Um, they, they live in this kind of, you know, medieval time. And we also have Buttercup, who is the most beautiful woman in the world. Okay, yes, that has a deep draw. I mean, come on. Um, I mentioned in my last video, um, like this trend of bimboification um, videos on TikTok. All right, well, this fantasy falls so, you know, under this umbrella. It's like this idea of, of being seen for those hyper feminine qualities, um, being seen for your hotness, your beauty, your looks, being dumb because they want to be valued for their looks and beauty. They, they are often ex incredibly intelligent. I mean, I admire them a lot for the guts they have to put it out there, but, um, they, they don't want to be seen for their intelligence, so they want to be seen as dumb. Again, these things are paradoxical, controversial, taboo, and deep, and I really hope they're not under, misunderstood. But look out for this theme of hyperfemininity. All right, guys, before I go on to the third, I wanted to mention one thing I forgot in the second theme of hyperfemininity. The, the idea of the princess. I think really captures um, the hyperfemininity theme very well. And, and think of what a draw that has from such a young age over many women. Um, it, it's like it's part of like the collective unconscious or something, because it, that's how powerful that idea of being, you know, that beautiful, special, feminine princess is. Um, okay, let's go on to the third thing, which is what I'm calling primal feats for breeding rights. Okay, so this is the idea of a contest or some other way to prove a man's, for a man to prove his evolutionary fitness his strength, his power, his intelligence, his, um, his right to claim the princess. He has to earn it. He has to prove it. He has to be worthy of the prize. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? It sounds like some sort of chivalric right, okay? Or, or if that's even a word. So this is, um, this is where a man displays his worthiness to win the princess as his trophy, as his prize. And this is for the woman, a very deep turn on because they want to see proof. Proof that you are good enough. Proof that you deserve their everything. Okay, which is what I'm going to talk about in the next section. So you can see this in many ways. Um, I think, like, for example, just using the example of the Princess Bride again, Wesley has to defeat the strongest guy, he has to defeat the uh, smartest guy, and he has to defeat the best swordsman, okay, before he gets the girl. And in Buttercup's mind, that's a freaking major turn on, okay? Or for the woman reading The Princess Bride, because he's truly proved he is the alpha. He is the best, okay? So what woman wouldn't want to be with that guy? It's very deep. It's very primal. And so a lot of you guys out there, you're, you're asking me things like, you know, why can't women just tell me what um, she wants me to do? 
Well, then where are you proving it to her? Where are you displaying your intelligence? It's like she's just giving you the cheat code, okay? And, um, you know, that's not a turn on. So that's why I'm trying to give you guys the insight here so then you can go to a different woman, wow her, and she'll be like, oh my God, this guy's, this guy, you know, he's a genius. He knows all about women. So that's, that's what I'm trying to help you guys out with. All right. Number four, the fourth theme of deep female fantasies is dark monogamy. So this is something I think women talk about a lot. They're kind of like obsessed with relationships. But I think so many men don't really understand what a relationship symbolizes to a woman. That's why I'm calling it dark monogamy. Because I think so much, there's so much more in a woman's mind when they're thinking about relationships than there is in a man's mind. Um, I'm not sure. But a woman is thinking about being owned, I guess, by, by one man. Being safe, being protected under his protection, okay? And, you know, a lot of times, like I mentioned this in another video, women will say, you know, I am his body, mind, and soul. Okay, that holds a deep, deep, powerful draw for many women, all right? They, they want to feel that kind of old school polarity where the man is strong, he's, you know, the hero, the woman is respectful and devoted and passionate, and there's tons of polarity, and there's tons of passion, okay? So this holds a deep, deep draw. Using the example of the Princess Bride again, there is, um, oh wow, I scratched myself. Um, you know, they have the deepest, truest love among them. True love, okay? Deep passion. And um, I think that is the fantasy for so many women. All right, guys. So as you can see, these four elements kind of form a storyline, don't they? A storyline that may be very familiar to you all. So here I drew a little diagram to illustrate this narrative. So first we have the first element, the patriarchy. Here you can see we have this kind of male-dominated world. Um, uh, let's just put it in medieval times. And um, so, you know, there's the king and here's his court of men. It's kind of, you know, that time in history when men ruled. And here we have the second theme, hyperfemininity, represented by the princess, his daughter. So that king, you know, controls his daughter. Um, that daughter doesn't have much freedom. She's really only valued for her beauty and femininity, no matter how intelligent she truly is. And I'm sure she is very, very intelligent. And, you know, she's going to fall in love with the hero, that, that war hero. Like Braveheart, you know what I'm saying? Um, some guy who who competes and wins in some contest, a Robin Hood, who wins the archery contest, who really, really proves to her that he is the alpha. Okay? And then of course, you know, her father is trying to control her and possibly marry her off, like in let's say, you know, Aladdin. She wants this guy and what she wants with him dark monogamy, the fourth element. She wants this, this ownership. She wants this relationship full of vulnerability, passion, love, control, all right, and a baby. And a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, why do women say, I feel so safe with you? What's that all about? And I, and I, that's really funny because I had a guy who, um, I told that to him one time and he was like, what are you talking about? And I was just like, oh God, this guy, he's, he's never going to get it. But um, maybe, you know, should have given him a little chance, tried to explain it. But it's this idea, okay? It's this idea of dark monogamy. It's the idea of being protected by, you know, your husband. Who's that war hero who, who, who owns you and keeps you safe 
It's this deep draw, it's this deep fantasy that's surfacing. Okay, and that's why they're saying, oh, you make me feel safe or whatever. All right, guys. All right, guys. So, as I was saying, sometimes, you know, these deep fantasies really bubble up and affect the way women see dating and relationships. And one perfect example of this, because there's so many examples, so I had to try to narrow it down, is in weddings. Okay, we all know women are obsessed with weddings, and, it, and it's kind of weird a little bit. I always thought it's really weird. It's like, this is a really outdated tradition, is it not? However, you can see all these elements in a wedding. And I think women subconsciously find this tradition of a wedding really hot because it's very erotic. Because all these themes that are in the deepest, many of the deepest female fantasies play out in a wedding. Um, for example, okay, in the tradition of a wedding, her father really controls her and gives her away. I mean, he walks her down the aisle. The man has to ask for her hand in marriage from the father, not the mother. Okay, um, so it plays into this fantasy of a patriarchal world when your father controlled you and men really controlled you and you were kind of handed off from one to the other at the aisle on your wedding day. You were, you know, sold for the bride price or whatever, um, I think. Anyway, so then we have the themes of hyperfemininity. We have the white dress, okay? We have, you know, the virginal white. We have the veil covering her face. We have the guy unwrapping her like his present lifting the veil off the face all right these things are hot and i think that's why the wedding remains so popular because it's one way that women can like have their fantasies in real life in a kind of an acceptable way um and then of course you know through the courtship process he's kind of proved to her he's wooed her he's courted her he's passed her shit tests and he is now her hero who is worthy of her everything. And of course, dark monogamy is huge in weddings. I mean, it's symbolized by, you know, till death do us part and the wedding band, which is like, you know, a collar basically, which says, you know, I, you are now mine. And, you know, yeah. And um, then a lot of women say like, you know, I feel so safe with my wedding ring on you know, I feel so protected from all these, these guys who would try to like court me. So yeah, um, let me just double check because I wrote down some notes about it. Um, oh yeah, of course, the primal breeding rights, like the whole concept of having sex for the first time on your wedding nights. It's the right to have sex with her on the first night of marriage. It's like a big celebration for, you know, having won the right to have children with her. And yeah, there's so many other weird things about weddings, like carrying her over the threshold into their house, like symbolizing the new life away from the father. So anyway, guys, you can see how these themes still resonate deep down in many people's subconsciouses. Yes, it's a modern time. Yes, you know, it's no longer the same patriarchy that it once was. Um, probably a lot of different opinions on that. I know I have my own. So, uh, these things have not gone away. They're still in the back corners of women's minds. And before I end it, I wanted to say one thing, which is um, there's this sex researcher, Dr. Justin Lay Miller, and a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, how many women have these fantasies with BDSM themes? How many women have submissive fantasies? Well, he recently posted a study he did where he said that in the age bracket of 19 to 29, 58% of women have as their number one fantasy of all time, a fantasy with a BDSM theme. So 58% of women know about these things. Okay, maybe not these exact same ones, but I'm sure some element of these probably plays into one of their fantasies. Um, so 
So they know about it. They're just hiding it from you. Okay. They want you to get it. But a lot of times this is very stuff deep down subconscious. They don't know how to ask for it. They don't even know how to verbalize it. So that's why I'm really trying to educate you guys, help you understand the mindset of women and help you see through women's eyes so that you won't keep saying all these ridiculous stuff about the games women play, okay? I want to help you guys understand women and not just dismiss them as emotional or irrational because of course things seem irrational. You know, those who could not hear the music were thought to be crazy and all that. So if you don't understand where they're coming from, what's driving them, you're going to just dismiss them as irrational and illogical and really irritate the hell out of them. Okay. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I made a Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for your incredible messages of support. I really, really appreciate them. And, um, comment down below 